so let me solve the next problem in the fillet welded joint uh, first we will read the problem a tie member of a truss consisting of an angle section isa 65 by 65 by 6 mm of fe 410 grade is welded to a 8 mm thick gusset plate design a weld to transmit a load equal to full strength of the member assume the soft welding is done at two longitudinal side only here they are connecting a, a angle section angle section of size 65 by 65 by 6 i have marked see 65 65 by 6 m um, it is connected to a gusset plate of 8 mm thickness okay i have provided weld at the top and bottom top and bottom if we see in the side view of this diagram see this this is the angle section a size of 65 by 65 by 6 mm it is connected to a gusset plate okay it is subjected to a tensile force the tensile force is directly not given in this problem they ask it to design a weld for a full strength of the member so first we have to calculate the full strength of the member let t be the full strength of the member okay we know that the force always will pass through the cg of the section here we are connecting an angle section the cg will not be at the center because this and see the cross section it is in the shape of l it is an unsymmetrical section cg is located at 18.1 mm from the edge so total width is 65 from the bottom edge it is at a distance of 18.1 mm from the edge these details are available in the uh, steel table okay so the load will be passed through the cg the cg is at 18.1 mm from the base that is t now we have to provide weld only at the sides sides means top and bottom not the, at the not at the end so see the load is unsymmetrical but it is very nearer to the bottom edge so accordingly we have to calculate the force resisted by the weld at the top and bottom let the force resisted by the weld at the top is p1 let it be p1 let the force resisted by the weld at the bottom is p2 that both should be uh, opposite to the direction of the tensile force that's why i have marked this this is moving from right to left but if you consider the horizontal equilibrium that summation of the forces p1 and p2 will be equivalent to t okay by using the equilibrium equations first we have to find the force resisted by the weld at the top p1 force resisted by the weld at the bottom p2 okay once we arrived that p1 and p2 values we will calculate the strength of the fillet weld for 1 mm length then we will find the length of the weld required at the top equal to p1 by strength of the weld required for 1 mm then length of the weld required at the bottom can be calculated by force p2 that is acting at the bottom divided by strength of the weld for 1 mm that will give the length of the weld required at the bottom that will be the effective length in addition to that effective length we have to provide the end returns see both the ends are free so we have to add two times size of the weld on either side both for p1 length both for the uh, p2 at the bottom also okay once we arrived the value then only we will know here he have marked at the end this as bottom as 250 top as 110 let me see how we will work out this problem okay first we have to calculate the strength of that member earlier it was a plate problem we know the width and the thickness simply multiplying width and thickness we got the area for this angle sections we have to refer steel table to get the value of area i have got the value as for angle isa 65 by 65 by 6 as 744 mm squared centroidal distance since it is an symmetrical section that is an equal sorry not symmetrical equal angle sections both the legs are having equal angles equal length 
therefore central distance is uniform that is 18.1 mm if suppose in the problem they have uh, given an unequal angle section means next then questions will arise whether which leg will be connected to the gusset plate either longer leg or shorter leg accordingly you have to use the corresponding c values central distance values in that problem okay first let me assume that t equal to tensile strength of the member that is acting at the through the cg of the section okay next p1 equal to force resisted by the fillet weld provided at the top edge or top side that p2 equal to the force resisted by the weld at the bottom edge or bottom side okay first i will calculate the strength of the member strength of the member t equal to ag into fy by gamma m not this expression is available in page number 32 in is 800 where area of the angle section we got from the steel table as 744 yield strength indian made all structural steel sections are from fe 410 grade its ultimate strength is 410 mega pascal yield strength is 250 mega pascal so i used 250 gamma m not value partial safety factor this value is available in table 5 page number 30 so substituting all the values in this equation i got the value as 169.09 kilo newton this is the total force acting on the member now i have to share to top and bottom ah. okay so if you see in this figure in the sideways we can consider p1 and p2 are simply supported t is the force at a distance of 18.1 mm from the one edge as like a simply supported beam we can analyze this one total gap is 65 mm between the two forces as like this we can analyze this as like a simply supported beam okay by considering the horizontal equilibrium we know that total force t equal to p1 plus p2 to find any one of the force i am taking moment about bottom edge i am taking moment about bottom edge bottom edge first i ha- i am considering the force p1 let's see the force b1 p1 into what is the distance in between that bottom edge and p1 that is the angle width 65 mm connected leg of the angle width is 65 so p1 into 65 plus p2 sir p2 is acting at the same point itself there is no distance therefore p2 into 0 so therefore that term will not come equal to next t into the distance from bottom to t is uh, how much 18.1 mm okay so like that we have to form an equation instead of that i have put p1 into 65 plus p2 into 0 equal to t into 18.1 i kept this uh, right side term into left side putting minus sign okay simplifying this equation you can easily get the value of p1 p1 is 47.08 kilo newton where t is the total load already we obtained that value as 169.09 kilo newton okay then once we know the value of p1 easily we can get the p2 value by substituting in this equation where t equal to p1 plus p2 so P2 is equal to 169.09 minus 47.08. That value is 122.01 kilonewton. Now we have arrived the strength of the weld required at the top and the bottom. Then the problem will be very easy. Then it will be very smooth. Next we will find the strength of the weld for one mm length. That is FWD equal to FU by root 3 into 1 by gamma W into area of the weld. Okay, this formula is obtained from the Uh, and the code that is the strength of the fillet weld here fwd equal to fwn by gamma mw fwn is fu by root 3 i i am writing this equation in single step fwd equal to fu by root 3 into 1 by gamma mw here we are they are talking about the design strength of the fillet weld they missed to add the another term is area strength can be up. we know that 
stress equal to load by area. If you need load, you have to multiply stress with area. Here stress is given. Stress is F u by root 3 into 1 by gamma m w into a w. That is the area of the weld. That is missing here in this uh, expression. We can use correctly to calculate the strength. So F u by root 3, 1 by gamma m w into area of the weld is nothing but the length of the weld into throat thickness. Now we are talking about that uh, uh, length of the weld for 1 mm. So L w will be 1. Next uh, the unknown term is T w. That is the effective throat thickness. That is equal to K into S. K is the constant. For fillet weld that value will be a 0 0.7. S is the size of the weld. First we have to assume the size of the weld. For that we have to see the limitations. What is the size for minimum size of the weld? For minimum size of the weld is because the angle size is ISA 30 by 30, sorry 65 by 65 by angle size 65 by 65 by 6 mm. Thickness is 6 mm. So we can refer the uh, table provided in the IS 800 to get the minimum size. So this is table 21 will provide the minimum size of the fillet weld up to and including 10 mm thickness minimum size of the weld is 3 mm minimum size of the weld is 3 mm. So it is fine. So we can get the value as 3 mm. Next one is uh, uh, maximum size of the weld. Maximum size of the weld for, to obtain that value we have to refer the figure 17A and 17B. Why both the figures sir? See? See this figure where we have provided the weld sir one bottom side we are having square edge top side we are having curved edge. Oh for square edges they are given different provisions to get the maximum size of the weld. For curved edges, the section with the toe, we have to assume the maximum size differently. So we can refer the figure 17A first. 17A. So in the figure 17A, it is a square edge means maximum size will be thickness of the member minus 1.5. Then see the 17B, how we can get the curved edges. That is the section with the toe means one fourth of the T has to be detected. So the maximum size will be three fourth of the T thickness. Three fourth of the thickness. Here thickness of the angle member is 6 mm. So based on the figure 17A, 6 minus 1.5. How much will be the maximum size? 4.5 mm. It is very clear. 6 minus 1.5. According to the figure 17B, the maximum size will be three fourth of the 6 mm. Again, 3 fourth of the 6 mm will be 4.5. Actually, we have to consider both these cases. The least has to be provided as the maximum size of the well. Here, we are getting the same value for both the cases. So, that value is equal to maximum size of the well is they are wrongly put 1 fourth. 3 fourth of the T is 4.5. 6 minus 1.5 is 4.5. The least among this has to be used as the maximum size of the weld. Here the both the values are equal. Therefore, I kept that as a 4.5 mm. Now I got the limit. Minimum size should be 3 mm. Maximum size will be 4.5. So in between them, I have to assume any one size of the weld. Let me assume the size of the weld is equal to 4 mm. So that is in between these two values. Then throat thickness T equal to 0 0.7 into 4, 2.8 mm. Now I will find the strength of the not plate, weld for 1 mm, not plate. This is strength of the weld for 1 mm. F u by root 3, F u is 410 grade, therefore 410 by root 3 into 1 gamma m w, 1.25. Since the welding is done at the shop, that is given in the problem. Shop welding, shop welding. So gamma MW value is 1.25. That value can be obtained from uh, table 5, page number 30. Okay. Then length of the weld is 1 mm. Throat thickness is 2.8 mm. So substituting all the values, we can get that as 530.25 Newton per mm. 
So now we have calculated the center of the weld for 1 mm length. Now we will calculate the effective length of the weld required for top edge. The force acting on the top edge is P1. So the load 47.08. Already we arrived that P1 value as 47.08 kN. I am converting that into Newton by multiplying with the 10 power 3 divided by strength of the weld for 1 mm length 530.25. I got the length as 88.78 mm. So it is having uh, uh, two ends. At the top we are having two ends. So I have to provide uh, end written on both the sides. So actual length of the weld required at the top edge is 88.7 effective length plus two times size of the weld I am providing on both sides therefore again 2 that is size of the weld here is 4 mm so 4 into 2 8 8 2 sir, 16 that is 16 mm has to be added this value that will be 104.78 mm let me round off to on the higher side so I have provide 4 mm weld length for 110 mm uh, at the top edge. Similarly, we have to calculate for the bottom edge. First, we will calculate the effective length of the weld required at the bottom edge. The force acting at the bottom edge is P2. That value is already worked out as 122.01. See, let me check that value. Where is that? Oh, P2 is 122.01 kilonewton. So, I am converting that into Newton by multiplying with 10 power 3, 122.01 into 10 power 3 divided by strength of the weld for 1 mm length is already I worked out as 530.25 Newton per mm. So, I got the length as 230.09 mm. This is the effective length. In addition to that, I have to add the end written at both ends. Both ends are not uh, discontinuous. See, as per the class 10.5.1. 7.1.1 I have to provide the end returns let me check that provision in the code at uh, uh, end returns see end returns fillet welds terminating at the ends or side parts should be returned continuously around the corners for a distance not less than how much twice the size of the weld based on this class only i am adding that end written value with the effective length to get the actual length of the weld so effective length is 230.09 i have to add two times size of the weld on both the sides you are having two ends now so i have to add 16 mm along this so that is 246.09 mm is required required length of the weld so let me provide little higher than that that has 250 mm. So, therefore, provide 4 mm size of the weld for a length of 250 mm at the bottom edge. Now, I will mark this length of the weld in the figure to complete the diagram. So, I have marked at the top as 110 mm, bottom as 250 mm. See, why the bottom value is higher than the top value? Because that, uh, that force is acting near to the bottom edge. That's why uh, th that will be very logical. See, uh, the length of the weld record at the bottom is